Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. On this episode, we're going to assemble this guitar and finish this build. I made a short demo and I'm going to review this build as well. Let's get started. These are the stock pickups. They measure 12.23 at bridge and around 10 at the neck. I wanted to try some different pickups on this build if possible. I had a Gretsch bridge pickup lying around and a Joe Satriani uh, bridge pickup as well. Now the Gretsch came in at 9.49, but uh, for some reason the Joe Satriani signature pickup was showing very low at 4 ohms, so I don't know if we've got the right wires. I'll have to just dig in further. I didn't want to risk it given that this is a Floyd guitar, you know. Swapping pickups becomes a little harder. So I decided instead I'll go with some Gibson pickups. Those measure 8.3 at the neck and 14 at the bridge. So it should come out pretty hot. The stock tuners were the generic standard import tuners, which would be okay. But um, I decided I wanted to put something special here. So I went with a set of vintage Grover tuners, you know, the bigger ones that uh, I think would look good on this build and work very well. So I got a straight edge. I've got my uh, guide. This guitar actually measures roughly a whole headstock longer than any of my other guitars. The moment I placed in the bridge, I realized I forgot to paint the cavity and it looks bad if you leave it exposed. So let's just get into it and stain the cavity ebony. I've taped it just to make sure there's no spill and hopefully we can get this done. So we're going to the pocket and to the side and then over here and we should get it coming out there. This guitar is massive so it was very hard to film every step of the way. I also decided to piece it together separately so the body and the neck separately just because of table space. Apart from the tuning holes, none of the other holes came pre-drilled. So there was a lot of drilling involved. I didn't have one of those long drill bits, so uh, there were certain areas where I could have probably done it better had I the right tools, but uh, I managed it what I had and uh, functionally it should be okay. Now that all the soldering is done, we have to just finish the output jack and uh, bolt on the neck. And here's the final guitar. I'm really happy how this turned out. This build took probably the longest and it's not because of the kit, but uh, just the time of year. I had the three C's, COVID, Christmas, and the cottage to deal with. So I lost a few weeks there, but I used it to my benefit. I gave each coat longer dry times something I wouldn't normally do. So the end result is better 
and something that I'm going to incorporate moving forwards. There's no point rushing a build, you know. Take your time with the finish because the final result will just get better. So apart from the Grover tuners and the Gibson USA pickups, everything else is stock. I'm quite happy with the quality of the components that came. The switch is fine. The uh, dime size potentiometers work perfectly. And even the output jack, which I had planned to replace, I just left the original because it made very good contact with the input jack. So I was happy there. All the plates fit nicely. I decided to put the belt pins right up on the horn because if you put it anywhere over here then when I'm sitting and playing with it which is most probably how I'm going to use this guitar in the classical position uh, that might bother me so I could have probably put it over here and I might consider doing that because there's a little bit of neck dive at this point maybe by positioning it here I might get less. Here's a quick demo. I tried to kind of make it on the Pantera style. I hope you like it. I didn't bother to level out the fret ends. They are slightly sharp, but nothing too severe. So I'll probably attend to that later. The guitar stays in tune, provided you don't, you know, do too much of the... You see it goes out of tune, right? So that's just a bit of annoyance, but I'm not even sure how much I'll use a whammy bar. In fact, I rarely use it. The only guitar that I venture out using it is this Joe Satriani. And this one is really adjusted and it's even got one of those trem assists. So it stays in tune with however much abuse you, you do. I'll probably get to that stage with this guitar at some point, but for now, I'll just go and block it. With these Gibson USA pickups, I mean, the guitar just sounds great, you know, and the bridge is really hot. So I think I'll probably have to take it down a bit and raise the, the neck just to bring them more or less at the same output level. But for now, I'm just enjoying how aggressive the bridge is. And I usually use it most of the time in the bridge anyway. I still need to install a logo. I'm thinking that through. I want to come out with something custom. Um, so we'll take some time before I get that done. I think for the next steps now is to block the bridge and adjust the pickups, file down the f fret ends, and uh, I'll probably make a follow-up video. With that, I'll see you on my next update. Bye now.